Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to be doing a final interviewee for the Summer Entrepreneur Series. This is our sixth installment that we've got here with none other than Nick Teeple, owner of Paxton Grounds down in Ohio. Nick's about 18, maybe 19 years old, and he's got a great base formed up with his company, with his mindset, and of course, his equipment setup that we're gonna get into today. I wanted to say a final big thank you to Equip Expo, Echo, and Stable for putting this whole tour together with us. We couldn't do it without their financial support. Plane tickets, driving, hotel rooms, you guys know the deal, all cost quite a bit of time and money, especially these days with gas prices and the cost of airplane tickets, it's absolutely wild. But I did want to say thank you for their partnership. We've been highlighting all of them on all the different videos, and today I wanna to just say a big nod and thank you to Echo USA. Hey, leaf season is right around the corner. Maybe consider checking out their Echo PB9010 leaf blower, loading up on one or two of those this uh, upcoming fall. We all know that leaf season is a big time to make big money, but it only makes big money if you're productive with it. Actually, Nick plugs the 9010 in this video because he's a big fan of Echo. That being said, guys, wanted to say a huge thank you to all the tour sponsors. I mean it sincerely. We couldn't do it without them. We'll leave links in the description if you want to check out all those brands and all the great products and services that they have to offer. All right, guys, last thing I'll say is if you guys want to leave an encouraging comment down below in the comment section for Nick, maybe just giving him some encouraging words and acknowledge the success that he's had, it goes a long way, especially for these younger guys, to give them that encouragement and that motivation that they're kicking butt and taking names. Also, if you guys wanted to hit a big thumbs up on the video and you guys appreciate the tour series here, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. It goes a long way to helping boost the video with the YouTube algorithm. You guys know how that goes. All right, let's hop back into it here. Let's go to Ohio. Let's go check out the interview we did with Nick Teeple, owner of Paxton Grounds. Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, we're gonna jump right on into it here, all the way over in, where are we at again, brother, Ohio? We're at Uniontown, Ohio, or Hartville, Ohio, here at my shop. That's so. right. So, so how far are we from Cleveland? Um, we're about an hour. Oh, yeah, okay, so okay. Close so to the Cavs games and it, Guardians now. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, but we are in Ohio. We are. Uh, so I crossed the border only a couple times just for you guys, okay? So we're doing it for you. We're doing it for YouTube. So hanging out with Nick here, Paxton Grounds. Uh, super excited about wrapping up the uh, Entrepreneur Series this summer with our sixth guest. You excited about this? Oh, I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> like, all, every time I do these videos, you guys wash the trucks and the mowers and everything looks clean. And ironically enough, like when we actually watch on Instagram, Instagram, nothing's this clean. No. It's always dirty, you know? I mean, the work truck here is a little dirty, but the the personal rig or the snow plow rig, it's cleaned up for date night tonight. So. Yeah, well, you said you're taking the girl out tonight. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's why, hey, you start running a small business, making some good money, and uh, not that that's the secret to a good married life or date life, but it does help. Start. It yeah. does, yeah, it does help, amen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, so um, you've watched the videos before, you listen to the podcast, we got to meet each other many times at trade shows, uh, so you kind of know the, the gamut here, so I'm just gonna give it to you and uh, take it away, man. So what do you got going on here, brother? Yeah, so um, I'm Nick, I run Paxton Grounds, uh, I've got one part-time employee. I've been solo up until this year, actually just a couple months ago. But I guess we'll jump right into the equipment here. If you guys want to hear more about my business, I guess listening to the podcast, 410 Unfiltered. But yeah, um, start, we got a 2011 F-150. It's my work truck. It was my first truck I ever bought. Um, works great for just hauling the trailer. Um, I guess we work our way back here. We got a 7x14 Suretrack trailer. I just picked this up this spring. Um, it was the final piece of equipment that was tying me to my parents. Um, I was using my dad's trailer up until this year. Okay. So I finally broke into this and I wanted dual axles so I could haul a uh, Bobcat mini skid, like an MT-55 or whatever. Um, so it's, it's perfect for what I need it for. As you can see, the handhelds were kind of all over the place. We got Red Max, Steel, Husqvarna, Echo, um, but I actually am gonna be switching all, over to all Echo. Okay. Um, like the 2620, I have a 9010 in my shop over here. Um, we're gonna be switching over to that, just, I love them. The engines run great. Yeah. Um, I got some sure can gas cans here. And then my first zero turn ever was a John Deere Z445 back here. Um, we got the bagger with the turbine on the side. Um, it works okay for fall cleanups now. Um, I guess the next step is a debris loader and a dump truck or something of that nature, which dump truck will be coming soon. There you go. Um, and then back here, kind of a more rare mower, we got the Bradley 52 stand on. It's got a Vanguard engine. Um, it, I love this mower. I couldn't promote it more. I wouldn't. I mean, if you got a Bradley dealer within a couple hours of you, I would definitely check them out. I have had zero problems with it. The only complaint is that the tires are a little thin um, and the gas can runs out in about eight hours of normal mowing. So those are 
the only complaints I really have for it. That's um, awesome. I guess if we want to work work our way around back to over to your where your truck is. Um, we got my plow truck. It's a uh, 05 F250 gas. Um, I've done some things to make it my own, just as a personal truck. We'll switch over to commercial insurance here in a couple months uh, for the plow season. But I got like new headlights and stuff on the front and some wheels, just <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah, make it look good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I got a good deal on it. Um, I've put quite a bit of money into it. I redid the whole front end and stuff, but it's a clean truck and it's working for me great. So. Yeah, and you plow with this guy? I do. Uh, yep. what, what do you got for a plow setup? Um, we got a Blizzard Power Plow. It's the 1100 series, I think. Okay. Um, so I got a great deal on that too. And we're gonna be putting a plow here on, on this F-150, just a small little one. Um, just to help out as a backup truck or to throw my employee in it, um, just to make some extra revenue. So. Yeah, I love it, man. Um, let's do this real quick. I want to go in depth a little bit more on the mower setup and everything that you got going on. But um, for anybody who doesn't know your story, uh, we're going to be talking about it on the podcast here. Uh, so check that out. We'll leave a link in the description. But um, give me like the two or three minute about like your business story, man. Like how, how did you get here? You're, you're 19 now, but you've been hustling this thing for a couple of years now. Yeah, Brian. So. Um, I think it was in 2015, um, my dad and I, we raced these RC trucks. They're, I'm sure you guys know, Traxxas RC. Brian, you got one. I got one. I, I bought one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're fun. So, um, I, got a, I ended up buying a couple of them, um, but my dad was like, they're super expensive. So my dad was like, well, how are you going to pay for it? And I, he was like, why don't you mow on? So that night we sat down on Word, made a quick little fire, and I ended up getting the high school football coach. Okay. Um, and we would race them, and every time you race them, you break a five, ten dollar part. So that weekly mowing, that thirty dollar lawn, the twenty five dollar lawn, or whatever, uh, just went right back into parts. Um, and after a couple years, I realized that I kind of enjoyed mowing. So last November, I filed an LLC, and it's kind of just exploded since then into an actual business. And I've really fell in love with the business mindset of it. Um, I've kind of fell away from the mowing stripes and everything. Like that's cool, but. Um, I, I'm loving the business mindset of it now. Yeah, what what, the, what do you guys do for work? Are you guys doing more mowing, more landscaping, and then maybe, how, how's like your clientele breakdown with residential, commercial, what do you, what's your bread and butter? Yeah, so mainly a residential business. We've got uh, five, 10 commercial properties. Okay. Um, but about 50% of our revenue is mowing, and then the other 20s and 10% come from mulching, spring and fall cleanups, aerations, overseeding, uh, snow removal. Um, just simple services like that. We've got a little bit more into landscaping this year, so our revenue will switch a little bit. Sure. Um, but yeah. A lot of growth, man. Yeah. Um, do me a quick solid. Uh, help me out with your equipment setup as it's grown through the years. So a lot of guys maybe just getting started. Uh, maybe they were 14, 15. They're, they're you five years ago. I, I always like taking it all the way back to the beginning. Uh, is this the stuff you started with, or was there something in between here that gets you where you're at today? Absolutely not. Um, I started with <laughs> a little ride-on John Deere, which was actually better than a push mower. Sure. Um, so yeah. it's perfect. My dad let me use it. Um, we used it on our own property. Um, I had a little dump cart I hauled behind it with a little handheld blower that, and a little trimmer that would work 50% of the time. Sure. Um, and I'd just haul it down, and I had a bagger on it, so I'd bag everybody's yard, and I didn't charge for it. Um, but yeah, that, that's how I started. My dad just let me use it. I didn't even have a hood on the tractor, so it looked a little janky, but <laughs> sure. got to start somewhere. So what, were you in a subdivision or rural? Like, cause it's a little bit more open up this way. Yeah, it's a little more open. Um, it's kind of a subdivision. There's probably a hundred, 200 homes oh, okay. in my, my little neighborhood. So cool. it, it's a little area. Um, but before I could drive, obviously that's the only place I could go. So I, I had like 10, 15 lawns in that little neighborhood. So there you go. Well, uh, so when did you, was the John Deere the first upgrade or was the Bradley? Um, the John Deere was the first upgrade. Um, crazy story. This mower we got with a hundred hours and we bought it for 400 bucks. Whoa. <laughs> so it's, wow. it, it was valued at, I don't know. Four grand. Yeah. Four or five grand. Right. Um, I did put, buy the bagger. That was a couple grand, but, um, yeah, crazy. My dad has always found deals. Everything I've bought, I've always got an insane deal on it. And anything I've sold, I've always sold for a profit or broke even. So it's been perfect. Yeah. Um, and then last spring, I believe, is when I picked up this Bradley. It's now got 600 hours on it, I think. Um, but we picked it up down in South Carolina. Shout out to Tanner Carney with Palmetto Lawn Services. Um, yeah. But he uses it. And What's what's the allure with the the Bradley? I've seen these popping up more and more. Uh, I I know it's kind of like a budget 
uh, conscious mower, but they perform like crazy. A lot of guys are rocking these things lately. I see their booth at Equip Expo. Um, give me like a two minute on it, man, because you know this, you're, you're one of the first people I've interviewed that actually has one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love it. I couldn't promote it more. Um, I've had zero problems on it. Like I said, the only complaints are the tires and the gas can ga gas tank. Um, but I put a shoe blocker from Ballard on it. Um, they cut phenomenally. Mm -hmm. I don't want to compare it to an X Mark because X Mark, it's just at the top of the line. <laughs> sure. Um, but for what you get out of this, half the price of an X Mark, yeah. it cuts flawlessly. Um, put high lift blades on there and your stripes are just about as good as like B and B. Yeah, dude, so. that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what size mower deck is that and what, what size engine? Uh, it's a 52 inch with the 26 horsepower Vanguard. Okay. Um, and over here, uh, this is a 48 inch with the 27 horsepower. It's a commercial series Briggs and Stratton. It's not a Vanguard, but um, it is a commercial series motor. That's awesome, man. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then what else you got? Let's go back to the truck for a quick minute. I want to hear how you got, got into this bad boy because the first truck is like you write a passage, brother. So yeah, what was so, this the first upgrade or have you had something before this? No, this was my first truck. Um, it's an XL. It had steel wheels when I bought it and everything. Sure. Um, we bought it from Southern Ohio to try and avoid the rust. Again, my dad found a killer deal on this. Um, I've put 40 or 50,000 miles on it since I've had it. Um, it's just worked great. And now it's just getting to the point where it's a little small for what I need it for. Yeah. Um, as far as a dump insert or plow or so on. So as I continue to grow my fleet and get like a dump truck and um, I want to do box trucks here at some point cool um, to get rid of the trailers but it'll it'll slowly phase out all right so now that we've been over my equipment i guess there's still more um over here in my shop a lot of the smaller stuff or attachments and everything so i guess let's go over there and take a look at it yeah so this is a shop i rent out here um it's a great price my neighbor had a power washing company um and he let me know about this this was his bay here um and he let me know about that he was moving out, upgrading to a bigger shop, and I was like, oh, this will be perfect for me. Okay. I was coming from like a five by 10 little shed at my house, and once I, I came home with the white F-250, and my dad didn't know about it, and he said, okay, the equipment's gotta go, you got too much. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I figured out the numbers and everything, and we ended up getting this. It's a 42 by 15, I think. Okay. Um, we got lights in here, electric, everything locks up. It's out of the weather. It's perfect for where I'm at in business right now. Sure. Um, so I guess we can show what's yeah. in the shop. I'm here. following you. We got hand tools here, minus an edger. I snapped the edger last week on a job. Um, some wheelbarrows, uh, a toolbox, um, some water and donuts for Brian here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, just some salt bags and chlorine, chlorinating liquid for power washing. Um, we got our blades here, the sharp ones and dull ones. And then down here we got a steel and echo hedge trimmer. Um, and then the echo PB9010 for leaf cleanups. Probably gonna pick up another one here, I love them. Yeah. Sound like a dirt bike. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, they do. Um, I got walls here for my F-150. Um, we put these on so we can put leaves in it and we got a little unloader here. Uh, that you can just crank to unload the leaves. When oh yeah. yeah, how does that work? Oh, it, it works It works okay. Pretty good. Um, it kind of gets tangled up every once in a while, but hey, it, it's so much quicker than pitchforking everything out. Amen to that. So, <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, I've got some attachments for my combi systems. And then down here's my plow for my 250. It's a blizzard power plow. Um, probably gonna get like a Western or some type of Douglas Dynamics plow for the F-150 just so the parts are kind of interchangeable. Okay. We have around here. Okay. Um, Western and Snowy X and Blizzard. Um, and then back here are just my snow plow wheels and tires. Um, just got new tires on them, but yeah. we'll put those on here before winter. That's awesome, man. How does the shop uh, help you with space or storage or just efficiency? Um, I would say Number one, it's keeping my equipment more clean mm. um, rather than it being under at my house We got a lot of trees and just tree stuff falling on it rain um, So it's been nice to get out of the equipment or out of the weather and just a peace of mind is knowing everything's locked up and safe inside of here And there's cameras and everything um, But also just to finally have a space to call my own mm. I'm still living at home haven't bought a house yet, but just to have kind of all my business stuff in one place it's just you step back and you look at it and it's like, wow. And it's just peaceful. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, when we were just getting to catch up before we hit record, one of the things you're talking about was knowing your numbers, having uh, good software. You're a firm believer in that kind of stuff, um, myself included. 
what what's your thought process towards that what's uh you know at 19 years old you could be focusing on a lot of things you're really putting a lot of time and money into your business uh so what's the technology and knowing your numbers done for you um it's done a lot it's you can't run a business without knowing your numbers and making a profit i mean we're a for-profit company because we need to invest in a new equipment we need to pay our employees well we need to have the insurance and run a legitimate business not just a chuck in the truck business yep um so tracking my numbers to start to see where I was even at to get a benchmark and then going from there and figuring out the lifestyle I want to live and kind of work backwards and figure out what my business needs expense wise and work backwards. So I know down within a couple hundred dollars of about what my business needs. Um, so I can kind of judge my prices based on that. I love it, man. And um, did you start right out of the gate that way or is that something that you had to learn the hard way because that, that's something I had to learn the hard way at about 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've learned it the hard way and I'm still figuring it out. I mean, up until a couple months ago, I haven't even had this mindset really. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely as I've been investing more into my business and figuring out my goals for here for the near future and seeing what they're going to cost, that kind of is what put it into play. And as I got around people like yourself, Brian, or yeah. <laughs> other people that kind of know what they're talking about um, just through experience. I love it, man. So. Well, here, uh, one, one last thing I'll ask you, man. Um, you've been doing this for a couple of years now. Uh, you've been watching the videos. Now you're on the tour, which is funny. Yeah. Um, what's some uh, my takeaways or some suggestions that you want to leave these guys? Um, or just, you know, open mic if there's anything you wanted to add. But uh, if somebody was watching this and they're five years younger, uh, anything that you would uh, do over again or any, any big mistakes that you've made along the way? Um, yeah, definitely some stuff now that I know how a business kind of runs that I would do differently. I probably want to went straight to box trucks and I definitely would have delegated sooner, would have hired employees. I've been so stubborn. That's been what has held my business back until this point. Mm. Um, you guys will probably hear in the podcast, I'll explain some more on that, but um, I've just killed myself. So I think delegation is key and systems is key, mm. putting systems into play. That's awesome, dude. I love it, man. Well, uh, we're gonna go bang out a podcast. Uh, super excited about that. We'll uh, again, leave that link in the description down below. But Thanks again for being on the tour, brother. Um, where, where can people find you? And you got a great thing going on, man. So where can people keep up with you and watch your growth? Yeah, it's I'm at Paxton Grounds everywhere on Instagram, Facebook, uh, paxtongrounds.com. You can search search me up or paxtongrounds at gmail.com um, if you guys want to reach out to me. That's so. awesome. All right, brother. Well, let's uh, go bang out that podcast and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you on the next one. All righty, thanks. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that tour with Nick Teeple, owner of Paxton Grounds. Hey, one thing I wanted to mention really quick here is if you guys are enjoying Nick's interview, perhaps you'll enjoy the rest. We've got five other folks that we did the summer tour series here, so six interviews. I'll have a playlist here or here or wherever you guys click those cards, and you guys can check those out. And not only this year's interviewees, but also last year's interviewees. So there's about 12 to 15, even 20 plus videos we've done with some of you young guys out there and highlighting your guys' success. Here's the bottom line. If you're young, if you're just getting your business started, maybe you're 12, 13, 14 years old, 15, 18 years old, you can do it too, man. It's a great side hustle. It's a rewarding career opportunity maybe once you get out of high school or college and decide if it's for you, if you wanna go full time with it and make a career and a business out of it. But I'll tell you what, these young guys putting this together, they're kicking butt and they're taking names and there's some great examples that I wanted to highlight on this tour in this series. Again, thank you to all the sponsors, past, present, future, and including this year's summer tour series that is brought to you by Echo, Equip, and Stable. Guys, that's what I got for you on today's video. Look forward to catching up with you guys here on the next one.